Hey, Greg. Hey, Holly. Welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Hey, guys. Hey, how are you guys? <laughs> awesome. We're doing well. We're glad to have you all on the show today because you all are going to open up our understanding and open up our eyes to a whole new world, a whole new way to get your hustle on and to bring in some income and maybe even start a whole new career. Yeah. And we know our audience is going to love hearing the details of your journey to stumbling upon this and then making it a real full-time career for yourselves. But before we get into the details of your journey, can you just take a moment and introduce yourselves to the audience and let them know what you're all about? Sure. Uh, we're Club Thrifty. Our website's clubthrifty.com. And then um, we blog together as a married couple. That's what we do for a living. And then I'm a professional writer now. Um, I write for The Simple Dollar, U.S. News and World Report, um, Lending Tree, Frugal Travel Guy, and I actually just got my own column in our state newspaper, the Indianapolis Star, which I'm really excited about. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. So let's jump in and talk about freelance writing. Can you explain to our audience uh, what that is? Can you break it down a little bit? Sure. In the context of the internet, um, basically every website, every business on the internet, every business has a blog these days, right? And they hire people to create content for their blogs. So um, I've written for a couple print publications, but I mostly create online content on the web for different businesses, different websites, um, all kinds of things. And she's not, she's not hired by the actual company as a full-time professional. She, right. I'm a freelancer. She's a freelancer. So she's basically like an independent contractor sort of. Yes. Which I like. I really like that. Yeah. Full control, right? Yeah. I love that. Take us back to the beginning because you all started off, like you said, with Club Thrifty. This was just a blog for you all to get your message out, to get your strategies and your helpful tips out to the masses. And how did that morph into this other arm of your wall's company which is freelance writing like because some people have heard this term here today on the show for the very first time how did you all first come into the knowledge of freelance writing what led you to even stroll down that path well when we started our blog we were kind of on a financial journey to like figure out what we wanted in life and be able to afford it and get better with our money so we started our blog to do that but we also started our blog as a side hustle to make money so when our blog started making a little money, I, I started, I've always uh, been passionate about writing and enjoyed writing, and I wrote a lot in my old job, which was in a mortuary, actually. But anyways, I've written a thousand obituaries, but um, I started seeking out freelance jobs because I noticed all these other websites were hiring people to create their content for them, and that's kind of how I ended up where I am now. That's awesome. So... Um, talk about your financial journey. How were you able to take freelance writing to help you on your own personal financial journey as well? Sure. sure. Um, well, one of the things we did was um, that allowed Holly to actually jump out on this uh, this limb was we, we were out of debt. We got ourselves out of debt, completely debt free except for the house. Um, and that really helped us and gave us the financial footing to be able to say, hey, let's take this chance. Let's allow you to quit your job now that you're making a little bit of extra money. Right. And um, so that was that was something that was, I think, really important, for, definitely for us. And I think it's really important for a lot of people um, because not having that money um, that you owe to other people gives you a sense of control. It gives you a sense of, of safety. Um, you know, without having to owe these bills every month, we could afford to take a chance. We could afford to take a pay cut. So that was, uh, it, and it was it, a big difference. And it, we ended up not taking a pay cut because right. it, it worked out, but, um, but it just allowed us to do, uh, to do the things that we needed to do. Right. Now, how did you all move from investigating this world of freelance writing to kind of, you know, dipping your toe into the pool, so to speak? And how did you get your first big break? What was that, that moment like where, you were researching. You was like, wow, all these people are hiring. Then I'm sure that you have to start sending out pitches and contacting people over and over and over again to finally get in that first big break. Talk to us about how that happened. Um, well, my first big writing job was actually for Get Rich Slowly. And I, w I loved that website at the time because it had a really interactive readership. Mm -hmm. And I sent them like eight guest posts. I didn't send them pitches. I wrote like articles and was like, hey, here, look at this. I wrote this for you. Publish this. 
And they published like five of them. And then I was like, hey, your readership likes me in the comments. You should just hire me. And they did. <laughs> That's basically <laughs> how, how it happened. <laughs> Now, that. what was it? What was it like? Because I'm sure, you know, the message is this doesn't happen overnight. You're going to send some guest posts out. You're going to send some pictures out and you're not going to get responses or you're going to get some no thank yous. You sent eight out. You know what I mean? And even all those didn't get um, picked up. A lot of them did. So talk to us about the battle, you know, mentally where you first took the time to write these great articles that may or may not get picked up. You take the time to send these emails out that may or may not get read. How did you keep going and not just say, forget it, this this freelance writing stuff doesn't work? Well, it's not for somebody who wants like to overnight success. You know, I kind of have an entrepreneurial spirit and I'm, I, I'm always willing, like for every 20 no's, there's going to be a yes. So you just have to keep plugging away. For me, it was a matter of, uh, you know, first of all, having a blog helps because it can be your online portfolio. Because even if nobody would hire me, I can write whatever I want on my blog and you, you know, somebody's going to see it and read it. And that's also a great place to get jobs because I had a hire me page on my blog pretty early on. So somebody could come to my website, read what I wrote and then be like, oh, I want to hire this person. Um, but I, I really think you just have to keep trying. You you, you know, if you send, if I would have sent Get Rich Slowly eight guest posts and they ignored me, somebody else would be getting those eight guest posts and they wouldn't ignore me. I think it's just a matter of uh, not giving up. And I think you touched on something pretty important too. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. Yeah. This isn't, is, you know, anybody who tells you you're going to make, you know, several thousand dollars in a couple of weeks is just not, not being honest. They're not being honest. They're trying to sell you something. Yeah. Um, it's just, you have you have to keep building everything just one block at a time, just like you do with, right. with anything else. And it's hard work, um, but if you stick with it, the work definitely pays off. The thing about getting your first big break too is like sometimes it takes that first big break to get other jobs because once a bigger site hires you, then you can put that on your portfolio, and then anybody else who's looking to hire says, "Oh, she writes for these two websites." Well, it kind of validates you. So sometimes you have to get your foot in the door somewhere to get started that so how can someone who probably never thought about becoming a freelance writer how can they know um that they have what it takes to be a successful freelance writer um if they blog and don't give up i think that's a really good sign because you know freelance writing doesn't mean you get up and write whatever you want every day a lot of times you write things you don't want to write which is basically like for everything i write i don't that i love writing i write 10 things that make me want to jump off a cliff. I mean, I write some really boring stuff. So you have to be willing to do things that other people don't want to do. And you have to push through when you have writer's block or when you don't feel like it or when your kid's homesick from school or when, you, you know, if you have a blog and you feel like nobody's reading it, the kind of person who's going to succeed at this is somebody who writes anyway. Love that. Love that. Now, when you all first started out in this industry, obviously you're married, you're also parents you also Two beautiful girls, by the way. You all were also working full time back when you first started. So to the audience that's tuned in right now, they're probably going through their mind like, how am I going to find time? Mm -hmm. I have this obligation, that obligation. So can you all share how you all were able to balance it all from uh, your marriage to parenthood to your uh, nine to fives and then to this budding business that you all were launching out on? Sure. Well, uh, I mean, I think it takes sacrifice. Um, you, you've got to be willing to sacrifice a little bit here and there. Um, what we did, you know, we would get up instead of getting up at six in the morning, get ready for work. We'd get up at five in the morning and, and work on the blog before work, before work. <laughs> Um, and then we, you know, instead of watching TV at night, we'd come home and turn the TV off and we'd write a blog post or we'd read other people's blog posts. We'd do networking, go out and connect, comment on other people's blogs. Um, so it, we work you know, weekends. on the weekends, you know, it, I'm not going to lie. It was miserable. It, well, it was, but at the same time, it's also, I mean, it can be, <laughs> it but was. you also have to do it because you're in, in, enjoying it and you have fun at it too, because chances are you're not going to start making money right away. This is not a get rich quick scheme. I mean, right. Um, I think freelance writing is one of the best ways to make money online, but it's not going to start, you're not going to start, you know, filling your bank account right away. When I, when I first started writing on the side and started writing for Get Rich Slowly and other websites, I would have these assignments to do, but I still had a full-time job and two, like one kid and then two kids. So I would like 
cry at night writing blog posts. I swear. Like, oh my gosh, I'm going to pass out. So miserable. When I quit my job, it got to the point where I was at work, like seriously thinking about opening an email and writing a blog post because I had stuff due and didn't have any time to do it. You know what I mean? That's when I knew I needed to leave my job so that I could focus on writing um, because I, w- I had no time left and I was about on the at the breaking point but it took a year to get to that point and then I was self-employed and making more money than I was at my job wow love that so let's talk about the money um what type of income did you guys generate when you first started compared to what you're making now well when um at my old job uh as director of family services I think I made 38,000 a year about 40,000 dollars a year which is a nice living but it wasn't enough for what I was putting into it it was a very stressful job long hours on call all the time uh just very demanding so my first year when I quit how much did I make like Uh, 60 or 70,000 maybe which was nice because like I you know weighed a lot more but then you also have to realize I gave up my employer match and my 401k my work cell phone you know, I didn't get a Christmas bonus that year because yes, I was self-employed, self-employed self-employment taxes. taxes. So really I wasn't, it's not like I made way, way more. And then, um, but it was still good. when you, when you, when you left your job, uh, you were making roughly the same amount of money as, as yeah. Uh, and then yes. after she left the job, after I left my job, and then was able I to focus on it. She almost doubled her right. in, in the first year. Like I was making about 40,000 a year at my job. And when I, was able to quit my job. I was making about 3000 a month freelancing because I wanted to almost replace my income. But then once I was able to leave my job, all of a sudden I had 40 hours a week to, to write. And then I, I made like 70000 that first year, yeah, something roughly. like the 60, 70. Awesome. So back at the beginning, let's just, let's just try to concretize this for the audience. You said you started out early in the game uh, or earlier in your journey, making about $3,000 a month. What type of writing pace where you at? That was about how many articles per month were you cranking out to get to that level? I would say like five, like five or 10 a month, um, depending on what they were. I, you know, I write at a certain point. I, one of my clients hired me to write all these higher ed pieces, like these college content sites. Um, and those paid really well. So I could do a couple of those a month and then, um, it just depend. It just depended on the work, but I was doing like I would say a couple at night after work, and then a couple every weekend. And yeah, now obviously you make a lot more. Now I make a lot more, but now I do it full time. So yeah, love that, love that. So for those who want to become freelance writers, how do they know how much to charge? Well, I think you kind of have to charge what the market will bear. And it depends on the kind of site that's paying you. Like a a smaller blog will hire people to write articles for like $75. And uh, that doesn't sound like a lot, but if it takes you three hours and you're making $25 an hour and at your job, you're only making, you know, like I was 38,000 a year is like what, $17 an hour. So that was good for me. But then if you get hired to write for corporate blogs, you know, you'll make several hundred dollars per article just because they have a bigger budget. So I think you have to find out what other people are making for similar work. And you can also charge more, the more experience you have. Um, now I can ask for more just because I can and people pay it. Yeah, and I think that's a good point because I think a lot of people get locked into saying, uh, hey, I only I only write for one dollar a word or two dollars a word. Yeah, it really actually it really annoys me because I know other writers who don't make as much money as I do who say these things like I only write for two dollars per word or whatever. Well, how often do you write? Because I write forty hours a week and make you know a lot more money. I don't think you should be snobby about jobs because um, there's all kinds of work out there. I do lower paying work and higher paying work. And I'm not too good for anything. And if you want to make a living, you can't be that picky. And you have to start out. I mean, when you start out, you got to start out. At a, yeah, I mean, you, have you to, work your way you up. You have to work your way up, just like any, any job. Does your credit score have you down and looking for solutions? You may just find the answers you're looking for with Credit Sesame. Credit Sesame is your solution for a free no-hassle credit score, credit analysis, and tips for managing your money. They are here to help you take control of and have the tools you need to bring about a bright financial future. Get empowered today. There's no credit card required. Receive identity theft protection up to $50,000 and discover a marketplace for credit and loan officers that will help you get to your next level. 
Visit hisandhermoney.com forward slash credit sesame for more details. What I love about um, your experience, and I'm so happy that you all are sharing this with our audience um, on today, is that you showed that you started somewhere and you didn't give up. I mean, you all have children, small kids, just like us. You know, our lives are going to be busy, Mm -hmm. but you all stuck with it. And now, I mean, you're making, it's safe to say you're making well over $200,000 a year. Well, it's all about the kids because at my old job, I never saw my kids, honestly, because I, I got off work at five. We'd run to the grocery store real quick, pick up the kids from daycare, make a quick dinner, bath time, uh, you know, read a couple books. Then all of a sudden it's seven 30 and they're babies and have to go to bed. I mean, what kind of parent was I being? I couldn't be a parent. Um, so I did it all for us, for them. It was worth it. And, um, now, you know, they get off the bus at three 40 and I'm like here, Hey, and I may not be done working yet, but it's just a different lifestyle that I worked very hard for. Yeah, love that. Love that. Now, not only have you created a successful career in this for yourself, but you also coach and teach others who aspire to become freelance writers, how to do so as well. So what, based on the experience that you've had in teaching others and, um, the, the, even the work that you've done on your own, what are some common mistakes that you see people making when they're first launching out trying to become freelance writers? Um, I think the mistake I just mentioned, people think they're automatically going to make $2 per word because they heard somebody else say it or whatever. I think you have to start small and take jobs no one else wants to do because, um, like I mentioned a little bit ago, I started writing these higher ed pieces. When somebody hired me for that, I was like, oh, that sounds awful. But you know what? I'm, I'm still doing those pieces and I make a ton of money doing them. If I had been snobby about it, I would have missed out on all that work. I think people want to do like the the glorified work, like they want to get a fancy column and be read everywhere and they forget about the grunt work. So I would say don't ignore, like take what you can get at the beginning and work your way up. Other mistakes, I think people just give up too quick on everything in life. You know, if if something doesn't go their way right away or if they're not an overnight success, they just throw in the towel. And I think anybody could make some money writing if they have decent writing skills, a positive attitude, if they're easy to work with. Um, and, you know, just have some writing talent. I'd say another thing people do is they don't use their time wisely necessarily, yes. um, especially once you're able to maybe do this full time. <laughs> um, people, you know, we see people all the time who are like, hey, I'm out to I'm dinner. at the ball with my friends. Right. And, and that's fine. But Which you know what? Great. I work full time. If somebody asks me to lunch, I don't go to lunch. I don't go to the mall. I can't pick you up from the airport. I can't go to Hobby Lobby. You know, I work all day. I treat it like a full-time job and it is a full-time job. And there's nothing wrong with doing it part-time either. But if you want full-time income, you have to be full-time employee for yourself. Yeah. You know, we watch you guys from a distance, um, you know, on social media and things like that. And hands down, you guys are one of the hardest working couple out there. And that's why we were so excited to bring you guys on the show, because we really feel like you all uh, can be the the picture of someone that wants to get into freelance writing and you can teach them how to do it. Um, Your your advice is very uh, sound and you're not, you know, just saying, oh, yeah, come, come, you know, listen to what I have to say, because we make over 200,000. But you're also showing them the ugly side of it or the difficult sides of also freelance writing. So take the time out and share with our audience. Um, Now you guys are helping people all over the world now and showing them how you got started and how they can do the same thing. Sure. So I did create a course that kind of highlights everything I wish that I would have known about freelance writing because I I did really well from the beginning, but there are a lot of mistakes that I made that I didn't know about. I learned a lot through trial and error. And um, so I just put it all in this course, Earn More Writing is my course. And it also has a Facebook group where freelancers are kind of helping each other figure out some of these things. So my course is nine videos and a bunch of printables and resources. And it kind of answers every question that, you know, I wish I'd had to answer to. So, and it keeps it real. I think it's not all like um, puppies and rainbows. It's like, here, here's all the crappy stuff that I do that, um, like one of the things I talk about in my course that I've never seen in another course is like how to add value to get paid more money. Cause everybody wants to make more money writing without giving anything more. So I talk about the different 
ways I add value so that I feel like I'm a more valuable freelancer. For example, I, I learn about the back end of my client's website so that I can put my posts in their WordPress and put the links in where they want them and add HTML. And do, Well, how do you replace someone like that? If every other freelancer is just emailing you a post and saying, here you go, but then you have this one freelancer who's like doing all this back end stuff that makes your life easier that person's more valuable. So I try to teach people how to be more valuable because that's how you make more money. And I think it's important to say too that, um, you know, we're kind of the exception to the rule. Yeah. Actually, you know, I don't think anybody who takes the course is just going to make $200,000. No, and, no. You know, but I think it's... Oh, I know like lots of people who are making, you know, 40, 50, 60, six figures. Six figures on the side. Who are really happy, maybe work a little less than I do because I work a lot of hours and are... You know, or maybe they take longer to write posts. Like I, I write really fast and I'm like hyper focused so I can get a little bit more done. But I still think that's a success. If I would have left my, if I would have left my 40,000 a year job and made 60,000 as a freelancer forever, I would have been thrilled, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, like you say, look at the options, you know, it, there may be someone, a stay at home parent you know, who needs that option so they can be able to take the kids back and forth to school and because daycare is expensive. So I love the fact that you, yes, you're going to have people that are going to make, oh my gosh, well over six figures, but then you're going to have people that are going to make, like you said, 40, 50, 60,000 and they're comfortable and they're happy and they're okay. I like the fact that you're giving them options. I love that. I absolutely love or maybe they want to do it just one day a week and or two days a week and make like twenty thousand a year. Or maybe yeah. like I know people who two thousand dollars a month. Yeah, know, I know people who ha are stay at home moms who write and make an extra thousand dollars a month just in their spare time, but they don't have to get a babysitter. They don't have to go anywhere. Stuff like that. You know, it's really all about what, how much time you want to spend, and you know what your goals are. I like that. So we would definitely make sure that we will include um, the link to your course in the show notes, as well as in the description box if you're watching this via video. So, yeah. So what do you attribute? What do you think was the biggest key or has been the biggest key for you to be successful at freelance writing? Because a lot of people can get in this thing, crash and burn and just throw in the towel. But you have had success, sustained success over a long period of time. What do you think has been the biggest key to that happening? Well, my first key to success was I wanted out of my job so bad. I loved my job. It was very rewarding, but it was a very big strain on me and our family. So I wanted out of my job and I was willing to do anything to get out of my job without losing my money, my income. So there was that. And then all of a sudden I was home from 2013 to 2015, mm -hmm. but my husband was still in his job. So he was like working crazy hours, being on call. He only had 12 days of PTO at his old job. And so then my focus was, oh my gosh, I have to get him out of that job because I was living a life that I was happy with, but my, here's my spouse that I love who's still working 60 hour weeks and never home on weekends and stuff. So that was my goal. So he's been home for almost two years now. I don't know now. I think I'm just crazy but um, <laughs> don't let her fill you she's one of the hardest I'm a hard people. worker I just like <laughs> I like to be productive that's what motivates me is being productive I don't know so like if you're a productive person then it's you could do it talk about that I love that I mean the fact that both of you guys are able to work full-time at home I mean share that experience with us. I mean, you guys are about to get on a plane to go to Greece right now. So, okay. <laughs> so I love that as well too, you know, being able to work for yourself, you have the ability to go and have fun whenever you, you know, really want to. So yeah, talk about that a little bit. Well, it's nice because he basically runs our blog now and that's his right. full-time job. So now that he's home, our website has made a lot more money because when I, when he was still at his full-time job, I was writing full-time and then like really not doing a great job on our website simply because of time constraints. But now that he's home, he can blog full-time like it's his job. I write and then write on the blog a little bit. And um, basically it's really nice. We work really hard. Like a lot of people are like, oh, you have all this freedom, but like this, it's also kind of scary because there's no real job in this house because it's just us, but we have two kids and I don't like to be 
tight on money. I want to make lots of money. So it's a big responsibility as much as it is fun. So I can go do what I want, but I have to work. It, like we can't just not do it. Right. Well, and there's no, there's no hiding. I mean, there's, yeah, there's no hiding. You know, if you don't do it, right. nobody else is going to yeah. pick up the slack for you. Like, you know what? You're so. like at my old nine to five job. I worked really hard. I did a good job, but I could have done a terrible job and I probably would have never been fired because like, you know, there's those people that like hide at work and don't really do anything when you're self-employed. You can't do that. It's just you. Yeah. So like, there's no hiding, there's no faking it. Like we got to make the money and make it happen. And it's also very rewarding because you get paid for the work. Yeah. You do, yeah. You it's rewarding. You and you're rewarded emotionally and financially because yeah. you, you know, you get paid not by the hour, but by what you're but, doing. Yeah. That's, I like that. When I worked at my old job, I worked really hard, but I was working hard for somebody else. And now I work really hard and then we get all the rewards, us and our family. So I like that. So let's talk about, let's stay right there where you talked about now you and your family get the rewards. Not only do you all have this, this newfound freedom, like Ty said, you guys are headed to Greece at the conclusion of this interview. But not only that type of freedom, but it also has helped you, fuel, fueled you guys towards financial freedom. I remember not too long ago, you all, I believe Holly in particular, you shared on social media this massive check that you are writing to your mortgage company. Talk about how this has fueled that. Well, uh, we're debt-free, and uh, we've been debt-free for a long time, and we earn more. So instead of, you know, we we put a ton in retirement. We max out our retirement accounts and invest. But we also, we did something really smart in our early 20s. We bought two rental properties, two single-family homes. We put mortgages on them, but... I wrote a $20,000 check to one of them last month and then we're paying one of them off December 1st. So we'll own a house free and clear. And then, um, those are, pro those are income properties. So after that, I think our next one's going to be paid off in June on the schedule. And then after that, we're going to focus on our house. We don't owe very much on our house. Um, it shouldn't take long to pay that off. I, I expect to have all three houses paid off in the next like what two and a half years mm, it depends it's like you never know what's going to happen but we're on that schedule yeah i love the fact that you guys are having the conversations and i mean hey you guys are making it happen love that love that well you know earning more money doesn't help you if you if you waste it all so That's like right. We invest a lot. We rip max out retirement. And with the rest, I just want to not owe anybody any money. So, and then our income properties are going to help us reach uh, financial independence even sooner. So that's what we choose to do with our other money. We, sp well, I hate that. Don't like it. I don't like owing money. Um, and well, it just gives you more options. Yeah. I mean, it just, you know, it, even if you don't want to work for yourself, I mean, it's still a great yeah, thing. It's a good idea. No matter what, get out of debt, you've got options. If something happens, you are, are okay. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, I, it's just way more comfortable for us. Yes. And I think more people should try to do it. Yes. So you all have created this life for yourself. So tell us, why do you think that becoming a freelance writer is a good option that people should definitely investigate? I don't think it's for everybody, but I think it's for certain people, particularly if you have writing skills or if you have a background in journalism, it really helps. You don't have to. I don't have an English or journalism degree, um, but I think that helps. If you're a blogger, I think freelancing is really smart because you're already writing on the web. You can use your website to help get freelance writing jobs, and, and then you can use like the exposure you get on your writing jobs to bring more traffic to your blog. So I think freelance writing and blogging are really, really good together. But you don't have to be a blogger to be a writer either. I know lots of people who aren't. And it's a versatile way to make money. I mean, yeah. you can make, like we've been talking about earlier, you can make just a little bit of money if you want. You can make a whole ton of money if you want. It's just, um, you know, it's, it, you can, there's everywhere in between. Um, so it's just a, it's a great way for anybody who wants to make a, a, a side income or work from home at all. Um, to, you know, make a little or a lot of money. What I like about it is that my old job, I had to be there Monday through Friday, nine to five, every other Saturday or whatever from nine to five. But with this, I can do it whenever I want. I still work regular hours, but like we're going to Greece this next week. So I worked extra these, this last month and then I'm not going to work at all. And I didn't even tell anybody. It's not like I asked off. I was just like, I got my work done ahead and I'm like, see you bye. Cause I can do that. Love it. 
Love that. Love that. So tell our audience where they can find you um, once again. And again, we will include the links of um, everything that you mentioned in the description box and in the show notes. Uh, but tell them where they can find you and how they can stay connected. Yeah, that's with you. good news, guys. You don't have to figure all this out on yeah. your own. Greg and Holly have put it all together in an amazing course where you guys can learn this process yeah. step by step. And you all can uh, lower the learning curve because they've made the mistakes and they've made all the victories, too, so they can help you guys yeah. get to that victory line much sooner. So tell us more about it. Well, our website is clubthrifty.com. And then um, they're going to have a link to our course yeah, in the earn show more notes. Writing earn the More Writing is the and, name uh, of the course. Yeah, yeah. And there'll be a link in the, in the show notes and uh, on uh, YouTube. And the, the course also includes a Facebook group. I mentioned that people are helping each other, but people ask me questions and I respond every day. So if you want kind of like a one on, I wouldn't say it's like one on one coaching, but I respond to every question in there. Um, and other people respond too, because I don't know everything and other people have different perspectives to share. So I think that's been helpful for people um, to say like, hey, look at my Harmony page. Is it ugly? And then I'll say, no, here's what I like, but here's what you might change. And then other people chime in and offer their insights. So that's always nice. It's like, it's hard to do it alone without any feedback. You know, it's nice to get that feedback. For sure. Greg and Holly, this has been incredible. Amazing. We really appreciate you guys coming on, sharing your story. The journey that you guys have been on is truly amazing. We know that a lot of people listening right now can't wait to come and learn from you guys so that they can start their journey to becoming a successful freelance writer as well because it is hustle season. That's right. And it's all about getting your hustle on to get the dream life that you guys are pursuing. So thank you so much. No problem. And even if you don't want to take my course, I think that like your best steps are creating a blog or like an online portfolio, sending pitches to companies you want to work for, sending guest posts. You can still do it. You just have to... Keep trying and don't give up. Yeah, thanks for having us, guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you great. guys so Thank much. You this has so been great. Much.